welcome back to the channel. Another beautiful day here in Ohio. The sun is out, it's cold, and we got a bunch of snow on the ground, but still a gorgeous day. So what I thought I would do today is um, something a little, uh, not really unusual for my channel, but I don't do a lot of how-to videos. But I figured I'd do one today uh, simply because I do get a lot of questions about making leather uh, in particularly axe leather so I thought I would do is a an axe sheath on camera I'll, I'll go through the whole process from the pattern to the finished product um, and we're gonna do it on this beautiful true temper flint edge this is a customer's axe that I just uh, finished hanging um, I still got a sanding handle and apply some finish to it and put an edge on this thing but the, the hang came out really nice very nice wedge job on this one and I did end up using like a Osage orange wedge for this bag boy but real nice hang so anyway guys I figured I'd go through the whole process of making a sheath for this uh, beautiful axe so let's get to it all right so this is my fancy uh, pattern makers material it's just a uh, manila folder <sighs> so what I'll do is start by um, laying this axe on the manila folder uh, usually I'll get the top pretty close to this fold and you want to be in far enough that when uh, you fold this over you have plenty of material to make your flat. We're gonna do a fold over style sheath on this one. Um, so, you gotta start somewhere. So just trace the uh, ax head itself. And you gotta think of things like, how are we gonna load this ax into the sheath? Well, the ax is gonna be loaded in the sheath like this. So, you don't want any interference over here to get your sheath in. So, the next thing I want to do is figure out the, the welt. And <clears throat> on my, I'm going to hand stitch this one so that you guys can see how to hand stitch some leather. But depending on how many stitches you plan on putting in, um, go a little wider on your, on your welt. So, I don't know, a standard, well, half inch is probably enough. So I'll take a pair of dividers and I'll give myself a good generous half inch welt. And what you want to do is run your dividers along the edge of your axe. And that represents our welt. All the welt does is stop the axe from cutting the stitches. So then go from the beard of the axe and run your dividers. Now this is where you kind of have to get artistic. So I want to give I want to give this a little bit of flare. Possibly. So we know we know this is a half inch. I know this is a half inch. You're not going to really have a lot of stitches down here, per se. But you still want to protect them. So we need at least this much room for our welt. So anything beyond that really doesn't matter. Um, so I'll probably... I don't know. I don't mind how that looks right there, actually. Where's my eraser? My well-organized shop over here. I kind of don't mind how that looks right there. And I'm, got, I'm probably going to end this. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. Probably, probably put a, the end right here. Give it a little bit of, a little bit of curvature there. Oh, 
Sometimes they're not too bad. We could drop this down a little bit. I don't know, have fun with it. It's not, there's no rules here. Just want something that looks good and that works. This doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line either. Yeah, kind of like that. So what I'll do, I'll put that line back in and I think what we'll do is we'll cut this bottom section out and then we'll make our flat that's what we'll do so this is going to be the back side or the outside of the sheath so we don't want just to draw a straight line that doesn't it's not really appealing so we'll come back in a little bit and bring it out to a scallop right about there. Because we want it to look sexy. Over time I've de developed my own style on Axis. Um, I can't really stop you from copying my style. Um, I don't really care. But I, I recommend you everyone kind of comes up with their own style you know so you can you can kind of be proud of what you did and people can recognize your work it's a little too drastic it's a little too drastic down there well, just a little point I'm not an artist by any means, and I'm not very good at drawing. That'll look pretty cool. Alright, so now we need to cut this bottom section of this pattern out. And you don't need... I just use an, a razor blade knife. You could use scissors. out of the way now we need to figure out how much of this we need for a flap so if you hold this axe in place here and bring your bring your flap over like it would be the top just fold it over like this trace the outline on the back. Just pull our axe out. Trace this on there as well. Now we're not going to keep this whole piece, but it gives us a good reference to line things up. You can kind of see how it comes together here in a second. This out of the way. This out of the way. All right, so what our sheath is looking like right now. So we'll put our axe in. 
drop it in like we're gonna drop it in when it's made we fold over our flap and you can see you don't want that much flat so I'm gonna want my snap somewhere around here so what we'll do is we'll just freehand a scallop in here and we'll freehand a scallop in here And we'll play with that a little bit, make it look more natural, more flowing. So something like that. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and cut this section out. And that's our base, basic axe sheet. So now we can we can tweak this as we go, um, but you have the rough the rough draft because things are going to change because of thickness of leather and stuff like that. But we at least have a rough draft of what we want the end product to look like. And we have a guide to cut this uh, pattern out. If you're going to do leather work for a living. Or if you're gonna do it and make money to make money this is the part you're gonna do for free um, you, you just you literally cannot uh, find a reasonable charge for this um, I did this fairly quickly but I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these things I have a basic sheath that I I, I kind of go by every time I could probably I probably have a pattern that would fit this but I don't feel like looking for it but you know until you get good at making patterns you're gonna do a lot of these for free and it's gonna take you a lot of time so keep that in mind when you're deciding to turn your hobby into a, a job <laughs> let's get this cleaned up and find some leather <laughs> 